I made all of these artwork using one simple filter in Photoshop. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to create some cool stuff with the clouds filter in Photoshop. This filter has been around for ages and I mainly use it to create abstract artworks in Photoshop. So if you do not know what the clouds filter is, it essentially generates a noise pattern based on your front and back color. Kind of resembling clouds I guess? The thing is that this filter on its own doesn't really look that impressive. However, if you combine it with other filters and functions in Photoshop, you can generate some pretty cool backgrounds for artworks, posters and more. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. During this video I will be creating some backgrounds with the clouds filter at the base. The point of this video is to give you some certain pointers on how to combine techniques, filters and other functions in Photoshop to generate some pretty cool stuff and to learn you to start experimenting. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so we're going to be generating a cover art or background, which is usually for me 3000 by 3000 pixels at 72 dpi, but you can use any size you want. And I'm going to press D on my keyboard to reset my front and back color to black and white, and I'm going to go to filter, render, clouds. And this is what the clouds filter looks like. All right, the first thing that we're going to be doing is learn how to distort the clouds with the distort tools in Photoshop. And you can find those under filter, distort. And the first one we're going to use is twirl. The twirl generates a pretty cool like rotational distortion, as you can see in the preview window right here. This kind of resembles a Yu-Gi-Oh card, I think, I feel like. That's what I've been using it for, for potions and stuff like that. And of course, if you want to uh, have this thing like be scaled to the full screen, you can just scale this up. Or you can start a larger canvas and then crop it later to the size that you exactly want. The next one is, we're going to go to filter and clouds again. So the next one we're going to be doing uh, gives you a little bit more control over what distortion you're actually going to be using. And that's the liquify. And this loads up the liquify window. We have a couple of tools that we can use here. The first one is the forward warp tool. Basically, you can use your finger and you can draw your own distortion on here. Uh, it's not really that visible, but let me just change it real quick. Check off show backdrop so we can see what we're doing. And as you can see, this gives you some control and you can draw out your distortions. Gives you some nice like uh, liquid marble effects if you're familiar with that. Something that I also really like is the curl clockwise tool. Change the pressure, density, and rate here a little bit. You can change these settings here. Check off pin edges and up these a little bit more. Make the brush a little bit smaller. Oh. As you can see, it's like rotating everything around a little bit more, twirling actually. So we'll put these all the way to the max. As you can see, the longer we keep our mouse over one point, like the more chrome and liquid this is going to be looking. So if we just click OK, we get some pretty interesting stuff. Now the cool part is, you've probably maybe already seen this technique before because it's a little bit common. But I want to show you uh, another method in uh, how to make this a little bit more interesting. But before we're going to do that, I'm actually going to make a new layer and make another clouds and show you one more. And the last one I want to show you is the wave. So the wave, what I usually do with this is I'm just going to remove one of these scales and for me that's going to be horizontal. So essentially what this does, this generates a couple of waveforms that will distort and move your artwork up and down and maybe empty it a little bit larger. Um, and for the rest, we're going to just leave these alone and click OK. And as you can see, we have some like pretty heavy waves. And now the thing that I wanted to talk about and how to create these and make them a little bit more interesting is actually transforming them. Let's go back to the second one. So with the transform, you can actually make these a little bit more interesting if you want to. So for example, for this one, I would just zoom out. Press Command or Control T on my keyboard to bring up the transform and we're just going to scale this up but then we're going to hold Shift so we're going to basically make sure that we only scale this in the vertical axis and this creates a really nice vertical noise pattern. For this one what I will be doing is because we haven't really distorted the outer edges of this is go with the free transform tool, scale this up a little bit but then also I would try to hold Command or Control and skew this artwork a little bit. See if this would help with like the distortion and the perspective of things. And this gives you a little bit more, like it looks a little bit more 3D now compared to this. So yeah, what I would advise you is you don't only have to restrain yourself to distort filters. I mean, you can also combine this with the transform to, in order to generate some pretty cool stuff. So the next step that I would be taking with these is if we zoom in, you can see that the colors are getting a little pixely sometimes. And we can fix that by going to filter blur, Gaussian blur. And if you don't really like the Gaussian blur, or if you, if you want a little bit more control, what you can do is, uh, let's go to this one, and we're gonna go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Field Blur. And this essentially gives you control over where you want your Gaussian blur to be and how hard you want it to be. So for example, let's start out with a blur of eight in the middle, and to the outer points here, we're making it a little bit more. 
So the further out, like to these points, the filter goes, the blurrier it will be. Another cool one is, let me just generate one more. We'll, uh, we'll give this a twirl as well. Uh, but another cool thing we can do with this is go to blur and then radial blur. And the radial blur itself, you've probably seen this, a spin blur will just like spin blur this thing. And it looks a little bit more like that one we had before. But the cool part is the radial blur actually has a second property, zoom. And if we up the amount there, this gives us this like really nice like zoom, like hyper speed loop. And what I would usually would do with this, these types of filters is um, before I actually apply them, I would duplicate the same layer, apply that same radial blur, and then play around with the blend modes. So as you can see, this also gives some pretty interesting results, some cool glows. Something else that could be really cool is if we go to like the difference, the hard mix is also really nice. As you can see, the blend modes do a lot here. So for example, with the divide, because it's like almost the same layer, there's a lot of white going on. Again, if we use the transform tool and if we rotate this a little bit, or if we scale this up, we can actually get some other results in this as well. So let's put this to hard light, why not? Now, so far we only have black and white images, and of course we can fix it if we would have changed our foreign background color when we would generate the clouds. Uh, but a method that I prefer is using gradient maps. If you don't know what a gradient map is, essentially this is an adjustment layer. You can see it in the layer menu on the top here. And this will map all the darker colors to a certain color and the lighter colors to a certain color. So for example, we can map the blacks to red. Change the white to maybe green. A really ugly combination in my opinion, but as you can see, this basically maps all of the colors to colors we put in here. And we could add more colors as well. So if we put in a gray here, the middle will be gray. So before we continue in the video, I just want to let you know that you can get all the backgrounds that I made for this video if you become a patron of the channel. So if you don't know, thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to give you guys free tutorials on a weekly basis because in order to create these videos, I need to do Dreadlabs full time. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, which contains a lot of textures and vector shapes and more, as well as an exclusive Discord role. And if you go one tier up, you'll also get access to a lot of exclusive tutorials, such as the basics of Illustrator and how to make a death metal logo from scratch, among many many more videos at this point we're over 100 project files so five bucks is definitely worth checking out in my opinion so if you're interested there's a link down in the description but without any further ado let's continue into the video right so looking back at our example files let's start and create a couple of ones that or try to recreate a couple of ones at least all right so diving further into the video i just want to give you a few more techniques but i think for now it's cool to try to recreate some of these for example this one is i think really cool because we have this cool 3d pixelated look and that's something that i haven't really explained yet in our new document let's just make everything invisible so far and we'll create a new layer with the clouds filter of course so the first thing we're going to do is go to filter pixelate mosaic and we can like definitely define our own uh, size here but i think we're going to go with like 32 make it nice and pixely next thing i want to do is go to edit transform warp and under warp here we're going to click on arc and we're going to make change the bend to 100 and it's a little bit off screen right now but we can scale this down so we'll select the layer and as you can see, it's like exactly half, which is nice. By pressing Ctrl or Command D on our keyboard, we can duplicate this layer. And with the transform, we can just flip it around and place it at the bottom here. Depending on how you want this connection to be, if we like mirror this, so we'll flip it horizontally, it kind of connects here and there. We can merge this. And now if we duplicate this and scale the next one up, we basically nail the outline here. And if we duplicate this once more, then we'll scale this down. You can kind of see where we're going from here. Essentially, yeah, we're just scaling down, further down, until, like, the whole canvas is almost filled. And just to make that, like, 3D effect, as you can see right here, what we did was I made a new gradient, made it radial, do it at the front here, so you can see it a little bit better. So, as you can see, it's a little bit, like, there's a little bit of transparency in there, so if we go into the gradient, what we can do is make the opacity when we start at location then instead of zero. So now we have this darker hole here. What we can also do is duplicate this, reverse the gradient, and then just move this back and scale the gradient up a little bit more. And there we have our pixelated tunnel effect. Another one that's fairly interesting is this one. Uh, so what we did here is, I'm just gonna go and remake this as well. I'm just gonna group this one as pixelated tunnel. So let's again start with the render clouds. And essentially what I did here was I immediately started scaling uh, this thing vertically or horizontally, sorry, and then just blurring this. 
And the cool part is if we don't think this has enough contrast, what we can do is go to image, adjustment and curves. And we can just add in a little bit more contrast here. And now we're going to just play with a gradient map. So we'll put a gradient map on here. I think what I used here was one of the Dreadlabs gradients, but I'm not sure. Let's check it out. It might have been this one, but I'm not really sure actually. But as you can see, you can kind of see what the what the idea is here by using a gradient map with a couple of colors. This is definitely like creates some really nice chrome looking effects or a link, I don't know, like a neon li liquid. I don't know what you want to call it. But yeah, that's basically essentially how that effect is done. Another function of the clouds filter that I haven't really talked about yet is that it can also be used as masks. So what I'm going to do here is make a gradient. And I'm actually, again, going to use the Dreadlabs gradient maps. If you want to get these for yourself, they're part of the Dreadlabs action pack for you too. So we have this gradient right here. And what I'm going to do is duplicate it. And then I'm going to just make this thing move downward. So we have like two gradients and they're both going into the different direction. I want to make a mask on this grain fill. And under the filter, we're going to generate a cloud in our mask. So you make sure that our mask is selected here. And as you can see, we now have this like really weird clouds distorted thing here. And that's basically because we have a clouds filter in our mask. Cool part is we can still manipulate this. So if we would have wanted this effect or we want to pixelate it or something, we can still do that. So for example, we can just scale up the clouds like we did earlier in the video. Maybe we want to like blur it a little bit or something. Add some contrast. And basically do it all and as you can see this is a really easy method of creating some abstract generated colors and stuff in your background because if we change this gradient for example they're just like uh, it kind of looks like flames i guess but you know the thing is if we just merge this down again so let's just select both of these we'll merge them but the cool thing is we can now just use like the other uh, filter gallery stuff that we already used before as well uh, for example let's just add a wave here and this will distort this thing again. What we also could have done is um, one thing I want to make sure of because this is a really large canvas, as you can see. I'm going to just select everything and mask everything out so we only have like this square here. But if we duplicate this and, I don't know, rotate this to its side and I'm going to play with the blend modes a little bit. As you can see, this just creates a lot of abstract stuff that we can use in our, in our artworks. So you don't really need like any stock footage uh, if you want to generate abstract backgrounds really easy. So there's one function that we haven't really talked about yet and that's the uh, filter gallery. And the filter gallery is actually a really nice way of creating some other cool stuff that also work really well with these cloud generated filters. And one where you can see it I think is this one and also this one. So what I want to do here is I duplicated the twirled version that we did in the very beginning of the video. And if we're going to go to filter gallery, if we, for example, select halftone pattern, which is under uh, sketch, put the contrast all the way to 50, as you can see. And this creates a really cool halftone pattern. Yes, maybe if we want to go one size up to four. If we click OK, well, this also generates some really cool stuff, as you can see. But if we put this to multiply, for example, we still have the other like gray value background. So, for example, if we would have grabbed our gradient map that we made earlier, we have this really nice green effect, but we also have this really cool like halftone pattern in the middle of it, which you can also blur it again, like if you want to add like a little bit of a glow to it, if you know what I mean. So, for example, if we put like one pixel in it, this makes the like halftone pattern a little bit blurry. So, yeah, the filter gallery is definitely like something that worth looking into so for example let's just duplicate this one the one we made also in the very beginning of the video go to filter gallery another really nice one is the graphic pen as you can see this like really makes a nice noisy uh, noisy texture but another cool thing is you can also stack effects on top of each other in the filter gallery so for example if we instead of going to graphic pen go to reticulation this creates any other other kind of noisy effect but we can also just click on the plus button here and now we have two reticulations but we can also change the second one to for example stamp we move this up and might create something other like now nah, we'll just go back to graphic pen so as you can see we have now like an effect of the graphic pen and the reticulation stacked up on top of each other and we can also again use that as a blend mode over the other layers in order to create something cool as you can see right here so i hope i've given you enough pointers and tools to start experimenting with the clouds filter at the base because uh, a really nice chance to put for yourself is to create something cool with only the tools within photoshop so without using any assets stock footage or anything else i've been 
been doing that for a couple of years now and I usually like find that I can create some really cool stuff if I just keep clicking and experimenting and seeing what happens if we put this filter on top of that and so forth. So before we end of the video, I just wanted to tell you that you can get a project file from this video and all of my other tutorial videos if you become a patron of mine. It's over 100 project files at this point and by becoming a patron you actually really help me creating more free videos for you guys. You can also unsubscribe at any time. If you just become a patron for a month, you'll also get access to all of the project files. So you can also just unsubscribe after one month. I've already talked about most of the benefits from becoming a patron, so I'm not going to repeat that. At this point, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of the people that already support my patron so far. There's also a lot more exclusive patron tutorials coming up. So if you're interested in that, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't have the budget to become a patron, of course, that's completely fine because leaving a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already, already helps out a lot. So with all of that being said, I hope you have fun playing around with the clouds filter. This is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.